Well, it's uh, Saturday here again. Uh, we're back into the garage workshop. And uh, I just finished up a uh, well, guitar the other day. And I got another little one here on the go. Um, so we're going to go and take a look at that right now and uh, see what the heck's going on. And I'll explain what's going to be done on this guitar. So uh, we're just going to flip the uh, camera around and uh, be right back. Well, uh, we have a tailor on the bench here. And uh, this guy here, um, I guess what's happened uh, over uh, a period of, oh, I don't know, three or four years of playing, um, I checked the bridge out. The bridge has not lifted, but, uh, you know, as, as all acoustic guitars will do, um, the, um, this part is bellied up a little bit. And um, you can see that the bridge um, basically has been taken down um, till there's virtually nothing left of the bridge um, to get, uh, you know, decent action, uh, you know, on, on the neck here. So I guess we're looking at a neck reset on this guy. Uh, it's the only... Uh, the only solution that uh, that's left so that's going to be uh, what's happening on this guy and also uh, there is just starting to be um, some uh, some fret wear on the uh, on the frets you can see the uh, you can see just starting there the mark on the on here basically the first three frets are starting to show some fret wear so um i guess we're going to be doing a partial fret job on this guy as well leveling the frets and some recrowning so if you're interested in seeing uh the process uh you've seen this before uh on some electric guitars and videos that i put up um but uh just on acoustic and uh, be interesting uh to see how this neck reset goes because really what I'm going to have to do if I get down here on the on the angle beside it um, I'm going to have to uh, shim the neck uh, and I'm going to have to bring the neck back uh, a little bit this way so as to get uh, you know um, be able to put a uh, the proper size of uh, of saddle um, and the bridge here um, like I say you cannot cut it any lower or uh, you, you won't have any uh, any saddle in the bridge left at all so um, stay tuned I'm gonna be starting that process over the next few minutes and I'm gonna put this up on the sky cam so you can kind of watch from above what's going on over and out see you shortly Well, uh, here we go uh, on this one. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the strings, get them off out of the way. Um, they don't look like they're that old, but uh, I think I'm going to probably put a new set of strings on anyway. So uh, let's just let's just get them out of the way first. Shouldn't take that long. There's three gone. So I'll just move this down a little bit. What I should do is I should invest in a a uh, holder for my electric drill so that I can uh, use that to uh, remove uh, <laughs> strings quicker I guess but I've been using the old high hand wind uh, wind job for so long now that I really uh, I don't know guess I'm used to it but uh, 
That's okay. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, Saturday here. Uh, we're just uh, not sure what I was going to do today. I didn't know if I was going to start this or not, but decided I may as well get at it and uh, get this over with. That one there is a little just wrapped wrong here, this guy. It's just around the... I didn't want to come off that easy. I'll get this one off too. Loosen it up a bit more. Yeah, so I'm going to have to, I guess in this case here, I'm going to have to put a new, uh, a new saddle in here as well because this one has been uh, cut down lower and lower and lower, I guess, over the last three or four years until there's virtually, like I say, nothing left of it. Um, another thing that you've seen me use before, you a little tool like this. Um, they're not very expensive, but uh, when you're going to take these pegs out, uh, this certainly makes an easy job of it. And I've seen, I don't know how many people try to take these pegs out with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a pair of side cutters. Next thing is they break the head off the uh, peg or the, uh, they damage the wood and not very happy about that. So uh, I'd suggest using the proper tool. Um, so hopefully it's going to come out. Sometimes you got to pull it a little bit. Um, the other thing I've mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, um, try to put these pegs back into the same hole they come out of. So, um, you know, what I will do is I will lay these pegs out uh, in the same order that I took them out of. So I know when I put them back in, um, they're going to go back in the same, the same hole they came out of. Um, it's just they were seated in like that, and they're probably going to fit better, seat better, hold the strings better. So anyways, we do that. Get these strings out. I think I'm going to save these strings because uh, these aren't all that bad. And, you know, um, looking at it, you know, you break an E string, especially the high E string. And uh, you're into a, a, a new pack to get one string out. So sometimes you get something like this. It's not a bad idea if the strings are in pretty good shape. You can just uh, tuck them away. Who knows? I might need them at some point in time. So uh, that's got that out of there. Take a look at this thing. Okay. The next little effort here is going to be to uh, put this neck in a straight position so that uh, it can relax and as well uh, when I'm trying to, uh, oh you can see the fret uh, wear now a lot more with the strings off. Um, obviously when you're leveling these frets you want to make darn sure that that neck is in a straight position. So get this out of here. There we go. Take that off. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the uh, the sky cam, the cam down for a minute, just so you can uh, you can take a look. You can see this uh, this fretware that we've have here. So just uh, let me bring this down, and uh, you can get an idea now of um, the fretware. If I get a spot where you can see it half decent, okay, there's a good shot of it. So you can see you know, what's going on here with this, uh, you know, the fretware right at these locations. In fact, there's one, two, three, four. This one is, is starting to dig in as well. This one is starting to dig in as well. 
not much on here so what we're basically talking is the first second third fourth I don't see too a little bit maybe fifth you know so what are we looking at basic cowboy chords is where the wear has happened on this guy so um, yeah that's what we're gonna be facing with this here uh, as far as leveling that off and get rid of that so um, with that said I'm gonna shut this off for a minute and I'll put the uh, the cam back up on the sky view be right back like I said uh, first thing is is to get this neck into a straight position Taylor guitar Taylor has a special tool for that uh, you have a a hex nut on here um, so you know most guitars would would have a uh, a nut that you uh, you slide into with a with a with a hex wrench but uh, Taylor has gone to a hex nut um, so you need this guy um, it came with the, with the guitars I think Taylor every new guitar that Taylor se uh, sells this goes out with it but this is what you're going to have to use, so I'm just going to look down the neck and get an eyeball of uh, kind of what's up here. Just going to run and get my glasses because uh, getting old and that, you can't see anymore when you get old like me. So there, put the glasses on and take a look down this neck. And uh, yeah, it's not straight. So um, I've just got a back bow in it right now. So we're going to have to bring that in and uh, get that so it's, uh, it's absolutely straight. And we'll just go ahead and give it a little bit here. See what's going on here first. Let's see if we can get this to come in a bit. Just about. Don't take much. That looks eyeball straight, but uh, we want to make sure. So uh, I'm going to go to this uh, this tool here, and we're going to stick it right on here. And we're going to take a look and just make sure that this neck is absolutely straight. So basically what we're doing with that, what I'm doing is if I put this up so you can see what, what this looks like, I'm putting this along the frets here. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking on a side view and I'm looking to make sure that I've got no daylight showing anywhere um, along this uh, fretboard. And, and you can see that right now this this straight edge is is absolutely uh, flat across that uh, that neck, and uh, we do have a neck that's in an absolute straight position. So uh, that's uh, one thing we want to make sure of. So I guess the next venture is going to be getting this this neck off this guitar which should be lots of fun so um, I think uh, I'm gonna look this up on the Taylor uh, site and then I'll get back to you before I continue but I believe that uh, Taylor has two bolts that are uh, up inside here uh, Taylor has a bolt-on neck system um, and I just got to make sure that uh, I, I get the right location here. I, I think I can feel it. But like I say, the, I believe there's two bolts. And once those bolts throughout this neck will slide, should slide right out of there. And I should be in a position then to make up a, a small shim. Um, just enough to mo move this neck back a little bit. Um, I do know that um, you can order uh, shims from Taylor. Um, so in other words, um, I could call Taylor up 
Uh, I could give them the, the bridge height and the distance off the 12th fret here. Um, you know, and it's, if, it's all, if it's out of, uh, out of spec, which this one would be if I put the uh, correct height saddle in, they would send you a, a shim that, uh, that would uh, correct that. But um, I'm going to take a look at the neck first and see if, uh, if it's easy to do my own shim. And uh, I think it probably will be. If not, well, then I'll have to order from Taylor and put this aside till it comes in. But anyways, I'll check the Taylor website uh, in the next over the next minute or two, and I'll be back to you shortly. Well, welcome back, fans. Uh, so, took a look out on the uh, Google. And uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Taylor Guitar has two bolts. It's a bolt-on neck system, which I knew. But I just wanted to make sure where all the bolts were. There's two bolts that uh, go in underneath here. And then there's a, another bolt that uh, comes up through here and uh, actually bolts the neck, uh, the neck right on. So... Um, yeah, so that wasn't such a bad deal to figure out. Um, so anyways, I undid did the, uh, the um, bolts, and sure enough, the neck just popped right off, just like that, easy as, easy as can be. So now the trick is, of course, I just want to tilt that neck back ever so slightly. Um, Taylor has its own um, shim system that I guess you can uh, do a whole bunch. I already called Taylor. Uh, they want you uh, to string it up and humidify it for two or three days and on and on and on and take a whole bunch of measurements. And to make a long story short, this, this guitar has been sitting in a humidified room for the last year uh, between 45 and 55% uh, percent humidity. So there's no problem with drying out or too much humidity in this guitar. It's just this body has bowed up a little bit here. And uh, it's that simple. Um, I need to get the neck tilted just a little wee bit. So I'm thinking what I usually do with most other guitars, I just make my own shims and that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. Uh, not really a big deal. Uh, one thing I did wanna do though is uh, just check in here. I just want to make sure that there's nothing in the way of uh, bracing coming loose. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick my uh, my light down here. I guess I'm it's going to slide. I'm going to have to put it down a little flatter. Just want to put my light in here, and I just want to take a look to see at the see what the bracing looks like. Make sure there's nothing coming loose right where this bridge area is and it all looks really good there's nothing in the way of anything coming loose in there that's good and like I say this neck is not lifted there the, sorry the bridge is not lifted so uh, we know structurally there's nothing wrong with the guitar now, as far as the internal bracing. So, what I did was, I said, well, I'm just going to try moving this a little bit. So I made a couple of shims up. One to go in here, and one to sit in here. Just like that. So, again, the idea would be to tilt this neck back a little bit. So I guess the only way I'm going to find out is I'm going to have to kind of put this neck back on to get an idea, um, you know, basically uh, if uh, if this is if this is enough to uh, to fix this issue I have, and uh, hopefully that's in there good. I'm just curious as to where that's going to end up. I think what I'm going to probably have to do is put the bolts in or this thing is not going to be able to, uh, to check it out. So uh, 
bear with me. I'll just uh, pause it uh, for a moment. I'll put the bolts in and we'll check it out. Be right back. Well, uh, put the bolts back in with the shims and uh, everything looks pretty good. Um, I took uh, I took my level to see how much uh, that has raised. Yeah, and it's uh, it's come up probably well, about an eighth of an inch here. So I have a new tailor um, bone nut saddle. Sorry that I, I have brand new and there's the old one so uh, you can see how much uh, had been cut off that uh, the original old one here to get this this action down low enough to be playable so um, I'm not sure I might have to take some a little bit off of here just to make it absolutely perfect but uh, I won't know that really till I string the guitar up, put some tension on it. Uh, this nut fits in just the way it should. It's uh, it's just snug, and that's uh, that's important because uh, the pickup is under the uh, saddle here, and if this uh, thing was to uh, be you know crooked. You're not getting even pressure on this uh, pickup in there, um, then you're going to run into issues with your uh, your sound. Um, generally, what'll happen is maybe you've got some strings sounding louder than others. And I'm um, just uh, looking if I can show you that this little pickup, it just sits here. So you can see there's a little wire uh, on this pickup that. Uh, goes underneath to the preamp on the volume controls and the EQ back to the plug at the back. But there's that little pickup in there. And like I say, um, it just sits in there like that. And it's important that this saddle is, uh, is the bottom part of it that makes contact is absolutely square and flat. So uh, that's perfect. So with that little task accomplished and the neck hook back together. Um, this is where the fun comes in because uh, really I don't know if that shim has been enough or not to uh, to take this full uh, this full bridge yet uh, with the new saddle in it. So uh, I think the next step before I do anything is level these frets off. Um, they have to be done. And I've got my uh, my leveling bar here, and uh, they're not worn too bad. So I'm going to be using the fine grit um, on the tool. There's a coarse grit takes a lot off the fine grit, and uh, you've seen me use this before. Just get it set up in the right position so you can see it better. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And I'm going to run it back and forth on these frets and uh, till I get those, uh, those dents out. That's basically the, the task for the day here. And uh, yeah, getting there. So easy easy motion back and forth you really don't have to put any pressure very little pressure on it because uh, this weighs a fair amount and uh, just the action of going back and forth most times is enough to uh, to take off some of the, the fret wire We're almost there. I've got just a couple little marks in here that I have to take off. 
Just about. A little bit on the edge here. The one really nice thing about uh, this whole uh, process is when this neck is straight and the neck has been reset and I'm using this leveling bar like I am right now, uh, it guarantees that these frets from top to bottom are perfectly level. That's the nice thing about this bar. There's no guesswork involved here. And what have I got left? I got a little bit right on the edge here. Still has to be dressed correctly. It's almost gone. It's funny how those cowboy chords always, you know, you sure know where all the playing's done on a guitar when uh, somebody brings it into you, and you see uh, see what's happened. Just a tad on the outside edge here. time getting that last little nick out of this one fret here it's just uh, deep in that one spot it's on the third fret um, so that's where I'm doing all the, the grinding here is to get rid of that last little mark and I think it's gone Yes, it's gone. So, the only thing about obviously using this tool, I've seen uh, shorter ones used, um, where you get the uh, you get the leveling bar and it's only maybe this long. So you know the guy's uh, leveling here or down here. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, you, you, you haven't got them exactly level from one end to another. And all of a sudden, they get all put back together. It's a little too low in this one area. Now you got fret buzz up in this area. So I prefer the longer leveling bar. The only bad news is, is that because it pr pretty well touches every fret, it means that when you're done, you got to redress and recrown every fret. So that's the only bad thing about it. But that's done. I don't have to worry about that no more. That's a done deal. And now, of course, we go to our Z or Z file that I keep... Uh, I keep saying it's a good little tool and uh, we're going to start dressing these frets and crowning them I guess uh, right now. So with that said and done, just make sure I got nothing on the back end here bugging, it, bugging the guitar. Lots of room there. So let's just see what we can do. I don't know whether I'm going to use, I'm going to have to use the small the small one on this this guy, so that's the right one. Okay, so we go back to our our blue, our blue magic marker, and we'll do a few of these. Let's see what it looks like, and I'm using the smaller the smaller rounder fret rounder here. That's perfect. I 
Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to level off um, and crown these uh, these first four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sky cam down, and I'm going to try to show you what this thing looks like when it's properly crowned. Because this is something that I find everybody seems to have a problem with. And you know what? It's not that big a deal if you've got the right tools. This is the thing. And I'll tell you, this Z file or Z file from Stumac, this is the right tool for this job. There's no doubt about it. It is just something like this would take a long, long time if you were uh, doing it with some other file. So I'm just going to re-blue re these guys. And then I'm going to do one pass over each one just so you see the final, the final crowning job on these first set of frets. This is the only way to really demonstrate it to you. So I'm going to bring that cam down. Here we go. Let's see if we can bring her on down. Now, if you look at that fret, now this hasn't been polished yet, but you can see that what I've got left on top of the fret is just a thin blue line left. Um, the silver you see on to the left and right of that blue line is where the crowning tool is rounded off the fret. Uh, corners and uh, so this is kind of there's a real good view of what it should look like now like I say I'll continue on doing the rest of the frets and after they're all done like this um, then it's going to be polishing so I won't bore you with the rest of this I'll continue on with my fret uh, crowning and then we'll pick it up again when I do some polishing see you soon well uh, we're back here with the uh, crowning all done. And I'm just gonna finish up uh, polishing these frets. So basically, the way I polish them, there's two or three things you can use. Uh, there's these metal protectors that you can put around over the fret and polish. Um, and of course, there's also the tape method, which uh, I find I like to use. So basically tape, tape off one fret at a time. I'm using 15 or 1600 grit sandpaper, very fine. Little trick is a regular pencil eraser. Hold the, uh, uh, the rubber like that with the um, sandpaper wrapped around it. And then just generally go back and forth on each fret like this. And uh, this will not take off any uh, metal. It's, uh, it's too fine. It will take off any of the little fine uh, marks or, or scratches left from the, um, the leveling board and the crowning. And the, the goal, obviously, when you're doing this, is to get this fret just as shiny as possible and smooth with no uh, no little marks in it just like a mirror is is what I'm going for here and uh, this is actually where most of the time is spent um, doing a job like this is on on the final the final work you have to do on polishing the frets um, right now that's looking pretty darn good you can uh, feel it um, when you're uh, running back and forth with that uh, eraser with the, uh, the sandpaper on it you can feel the uh, the um, uh, resistance fade away as that fret becomes uh, smoother and smoother 
So uh, that's a really good example there uh, where you can see a uh, uh, first fret has been uh, polished, the second fret is not. And you can see the, the real difference in, uh, in the, the look of it. So I just go along one at a time. You can't rush. It's uh, just one of those those things that, you know, um, I find most people don't like doing the uh, guitar work. It, it's, it, it's tedious. However, it sure is satisfying after you've done a guitar. And uh, especially a player brings his guitar in, it's in bad shape. And I've had guitars in here that were, you know, unplayable. Um, and... Uh, you do your, your, your thing on them and dress everything up, do a good setup on the guitar. And the owner comes back and picks it up and starts to play it and says, my God, I can't believe it. It's like a brand new guitar. And uh, it can be that way. It, it uh, certainly can. That one's really nice. So uh, you're getting the process as I move along. It also gives you a pretty good idea of the time involved to do this correctly. There are uh, tools that you can buy, that, like little uh, polishing wheels and things that you can use, um, I guess, to speed this process up. But in my case, I, I don't know, I like the hand, the old hand uh, approach here. I don't mind spending the time. And uh, I, I find if I'm using something electric, I, I don't get a sense of improvement. Whereas what you see me doing right now, um, it's, it's very obvious to me as I, as I, as I, dress this up and polish this fret becomes very obvious to me um, how much smoother it's become and I can feel it as I work the fret so I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this I've got another 18 or 19 to go so I probably got myself another oh I don't know 45 minutes or so so uh, I'm gonna say over and out for now when we'll get back to you uh, be doing the restringing of the job uh, of, and, and see uh, after it's restrung or get an idea if I have to take that uh, saddle on the bridge down anymore or not. So for now, over and out. Well, guitar fans, uh, I finished the, uh, the polishing and uh, I'm just uh, conditioning the uh, fretboard. And uh, what I use is uh, pure linseed oil which I have in a bottle here. And I put a few drops on a paper towel. And I just uh, rub it in. Uh, you don't want this dripping or thick. You just cover it like this. Cover it well. Let it sit there. Just make sure you got no globs of linseed oil sitting on the fretboard. So, just like that. And that's basically all you really got to do to uh, condition that fretboard. Um, I'm going to pull the Pull that out, and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, linseed oil on the bridge here. Do a little conditioning, making now it's very dry, making sure that I don't get any linseed oil dripping in there and on the uh, the pickup. It's just the uh, just lightly put linseed oil on it. Give a little conditioning on that uh, that bridge. 
So that's pretty well said and done on that deal. Um, now I'm just going to take my uh, cleaner and I guess clean the guitar body. That's the next little thing. And then uh, we're going to be in for restraining, I guess. Um, I'm going to grab my, uh, I'm using a Dunlop 65 here for uh, cleaning. Just a little spray, spray it on your guitar, rub it down. So it's not much to do, a little bit of, a little bit of dust, a little bit, get the fingerprints off if there are any. around the bridge oh, this is a be nice to see this guitar once it's all done and strung and play it see what she sounds like I'm uh, anxious because uh, all that's left to do is basically restring it Starting to look pretty nice. Good clean up. Don't need much of this either. It's just a, just a spray cleaner. So with that done, we're in pretty good shape. You can see where a little bit of dirt's got. I guess it's stuck underneath there. It's hard to clean underneath those strings. So I'm just going to give it a little extra, uh, little extra rubbing here. looks better yeah happy with that well let's take a look at the string selection here oh, I get my strings out and uh, that's what I'm going to be using. Number 10s, light for acoustic guitar. And we'll see, uh, we'll see now if I have to take that neck off again. <laughs> I hope not. To uh, get that neck a little higher. So anyways, um, let's see what we have to do here. I can't screw this up because they got the, these are color coded with uh, colored balls on the end and they give you the little instructions as to which color goes where. It's uh, pretty evident from the, the gauge of the, the strings. But you'll see now that uh, I put the pegs back basically and they in the same order I took them out and that uh, to me that's just uh, makes sense so uh, get the first one in there first and get the second one in two down four more to go
fourth string black. Back to the pig. Green's next in the third spot. And we've got our B and our E left. B and E. B and E. Break and enter. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Purple. Notice there's a little slot on this. So the idea, of course, is when you put these in to make sure that the string uh, is, is in that slot correctly. So, uh, just like that. They're all in there nice and neat. So with that, I'll put back on the, uh, put the bridge back in, in the saddle and the bridge. And let's see what's going to happen here. We don't know. <laughs> Move this down so you can see it a little bit better in the uh, sky cam here. See the restringing process. One thing I always like to do too is uh, when I got this thing apart like this, um, it's a good time to make sure that these are. These are uh, tight and not going to fall off. I think it's a number nine, I think. No. Would it, could it be a number 10? Well, it ain't 12, I can tell you that right now. Maybe it's a 3 8 Good question. No. Yeah. It's really funny because every guitar I find has got a different, uh, it's a 10. Metric. Hmm. Okie dokie. That's not a big deal. So let's just make sure they're tight. I'm just uh, doing this by hand. I don't like over tightening these guys. So just make sure they're, they're tight. They all seem to be. Okay, start off. There's a trick to this, uh, this restringing. And I'll show you what I do. And it, it might not be what everybody does, but it's what I do. Got my uh, holder here, my neck holder. And what I find is, is that if I take this string out just about to there, that you know, a little bit more, eh? Just about to this next, this next uh, peg here. That's kind of where I want this thing to start. So, put the string through. You got this slack here. And uh, obviously, I have a little cheater here, make it, make it turn a little faster. But what, what I do is I just bend this guy just up like that and hold this down here and uh, start tightening. And if I look like I got too much wire there, because every guitar is different, in this case here you see it looks to me like I got too much wire. So instead of tightening it all up, I just back it off back it off a little bit and I'll just pull a little bit more through take a little bit more like that there we go let's tighten her up now see if we got a little bit better 
Because we only have to go around this thing about two or three times to make sure it don't slip. It doesn't have to be 25 wraps around the peg here. So right now I'm onto my third wrap right now. And that's just about right, I'd say. So I'm very curious to see how this is gonna shape out once I get the tension on here. I'm just gonna take a look. Very curious. I think that bridge may have to come down a little bit, but not that much just from the look of it. And you know what? I really don't know till I string this guy up. There's just no way to guess until I got this guy strung up. And it's that simple. So, may as well just continue on, string it up, and uh, get an idea once I get some full tension on here what this thing is all about as far as... Uh, saddle height on the bridge. There's an example where way too much wire on here and it uh, it pulled up. I wasn't tight at the, down at the saddle. So as a result, I end up with a, a lot of slack. So I'm just gonna unwind this and I'm just gonna take this guy and I'm gonna get rid of some of the slack wire here so I don't have as much winding on the peg here as I do. So we'll just take it in a boat to there. Rewinder. Not a big deal. I think it's to keep the pressure on the uh, little bit of tension on the string so it uh, goes on correctly. That's better. Okay, let's see what we're looking like here. Yeah, I'm gonna be very curious to see how this turns out. Yeah. Very curious. It's the old saying, curiosity killed the cat. I ain't got no cat, so I don't have to worry. Yeah. Maybe I should get that electric drill attachment for this thing. Saved me a lot of winding, I guess. If I did. curious to see this. Well, keep on trucking. Keep on trucking is the name of the game here. I always love this one because you're uh, you're winding it backwards. It's always fun this one here. So I give it a little bit of a little bit of slack there. Something like that wind this up and again I'm just gonna give it some pressure here start the winding
Yep. You almost think I've done this before a few times, huh? Yeah. Get used to this. These tuners, I believe, are also, um, I can't recall if they're 15 to 1 ratio or 16 to 1. So it takes a takes a fair amount of uh, turning to, uh, <laughs> to tighten these guys up. Oh, a little bit of pull it. And one left, one left. Uno to go. Uno. Yeah. That's about right. Do this last guy and now we're gonna take a look at that situation there on that bridge we'll have a good idea of what uh, what's going on with it round around they go Pull on that one. Here, pull. Before it gets tight. There we go. here okay uh, so what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna bore you through the tuning process I'll uh, tune this guitar up get it up to pitch and then we're gonna take a look at the uh, the distance here check the relief and uh, See, see if we have to lower this. Hopefully, like I say, hopefully I don't have to take this neck off again after getting all this done. Anyway, see you shortly. Well, uh, things are uh, progressing along really nicely here. So, uh, ended up with the uh, strings on and the tune-up. And... Uh, really nice I've now got a, a, a decent height on the bridge um, as far as the saddle is concerned now um, you can see instead of that little wee saddle it was almost cut right down to where the the bridge starts I've now got a, a decent saddle got some height to it uh, which is what I wanted um, the action is uh, perfect it's really nice really nice action Lots of sustain on this tailor. Uh, the only issue after all this is said and done, uh, I find out that I just think that the the nut is a little high uh, now. Um, now keep in mind, I uh, leveled these frets, uh, reset the neck, 
and it just seems to me like uh, feels feels high. So uh, one string at a time, I'm gonna just just ever so slightly take a little bit off that nut and lower the strings up here. Um, yeah, just one at a time. It uh, won't take much, but I'm just gonna back it off a little bit. Take that. Um, just so you know, um, working on these nuts, you you, you should have a, a set of uh, uh, saws for that. Um, again, I've uh, I like the Stumac product, so I've got a full set of uh, Stumac uh, Stumac uh, saws, fret saws, just for the purposes of adjusting these. Uh, these uh, these nuts here. So all I'm going to do, and the thing is, uh, just so you know, before I, I go and start adjusting these nuts, when you start cutting that nut, there's an angle to it. It's not like this. Uh, it, it's almost like almost not quite 45. But the idea being is is that this comes to a point right there where that string ends uh, on, on, on that nut. So what you don't want is a big flat area. Uh, you, you actually saw it on, I don't know, I'd say about a 30 degree angle. So that's what I'm gonna be doing when I'm lowering these, uh, these strings. I'm gonna be going on about a 40, no, 35, 40, not quite 45. So we're just gonna ever so slightly Take a little bit off of there and just put that back on and just see how that feels. Just a tad more, just a touch. It's just a touch. This is where you really get into the fine, uh, the fine tuning on a guitar is when you do the final little little setup like this just to get a little bit lower on that. I just took ever so little off and now let's take a look at it. Yeah, a little bit more. Like I say, <laughs> you're better to go at this a little at a time. And to cut it too deep and have to pull the nut off and uh, you know I think that's that's better yeah so on to the next one I'm just gonna back it off so in that case there I used a dot zero three oh go to the next size which is an 025. Just take it off. And again, just ever so slightly. Take a little bit off of that. Put that back on. See what that feels like. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you how to do this as far as measurements are concerned. Um, this is really, in my case, when I work on something like this, I basically go by feel. Uh, it, it's, it's not something that I can really, you know, I guess there is a way of measuring it or something, but I'm finding... I'm finding you're better to go by feel on this stuff. Yeah. I'm just touching it ever so little. Just back the string off a little bit and uh, go for it.
Maybe I should be able to get that off now. A little too much. Go down to a 10 here. Come on out of there, you. There it goes. Like I say, you don't take much. See what that feels like. Let's see what that feels like. I think it's gonna be a little better. So uh, we'll tune her up and give it a shot. I won't bore you with the tuning process again. See you back shortly after the tuning's been done. Well, the uh, nut's been adjusted uh, successfully, and uh, I just uh, gave it a shot here, and uh, yeah, she feels really nice, you know, really nice. Yep, she's a done deal. That uh, is the end of that project. It's, uh, I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. The um, Put the little cap back on. I uh, measured the relief on this guy. Uh, didn't show that in the film, but anyways, uh, basically, uh, you know, capped on here. You hold down about here, and you look at... How much you got there? I got uh, 012, 12 one thousandths of an inch on the uh, relief on this guy. So, uh, and there's no buzz at all on, on anything here. It's, uh, it's absolutely, yeah. choke on the bending either you know if I can get here oh I'll well, hit help I hit the right string eh yeah no choke yep quite happy so with that we'll put this back on and uh, we're done so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, this one uh, there's quite a bit done on this guitar this uh, Acoustic, like I say, we had uh, we had not only we had a neck neck reset done on it, and uh, we did the uh, the fret leveling and uh, the crowning and all the polishing done. Um, did a little work on the nut um, to lower the string action on the uh, the top end here. Um, dropped the bridge a little bit. With the uh, saddle, just shaved it a little, a little bit, and uh, at this point, 
Uh, this guitar is going to be good for a while now. And uh, should be lots of fun to play. So uh, with that, I'll bid you all adieu. And uh, weekend's coming up. You all have a great weekend. I know I'm going to. Uh, and it's uh, Pete's Garage. Uh, another adventure story. And uh, over and out.